Welcome to Lima, the capital of modern-day Peru. Founded in the 16th century by the Spanish conquistadors. Yes, a very loud city. And it was first founded by the Spanish in order to have a deep water port to export the gold and silver of the Inca to Spain. And then later was used as a place for migrants or immigrants from Spain to reach and populate Peru. Now before the Spanish arrived, this area was heavily populated by agriculture and enormous pyramidal structures. Uh, the culture is believed to have been called the Rimac, named after the river that was once powerful and now is all dried up because of overuse. But Rimac is an Inca word meaning the one who speaks, and so that describes the fact that it was a big, fast-flowing river. Agriculture was so successful here in pre-Columbian times, covering maybe 400 square kilometers, that these people, the so-called Rimac, were able to construct massive pyramidal structures. And so that's what we've come to see today, one of five remaining Supposedly there used to be hundreds of them, but during the expansion of the city of Lima, most of them were demolished in order to accommodate an expanding population. A very sad fact, but again, luckily, we have at least five of them remaining. So as you can see, the pyramid, this is a small section of it, is made of millions, possibly 50 million, handcrafted bricks of adobe clay. Um, most archaeologists believe that the main construction of this waka, called Waka Pukiana, was done between 200 and 700 AD, again by the so-called Rimac culture. And now we're going to go inside and have a look at its grandeur and details of this ancient time period, long before the Inca. The Inca were an expansionist people. They didn't necessarily conquer um, other tribal cultures, usually they used negotiation rather than warfare because they knew that warfare would be very costly as regards human resources and destructiveness. And so they were the ones that named the people and the area the Rimac. We have no idea what the original people called themselves and that's typical in Peru. Um, of course my favorite area is called Paracas, south of Lima. That again is a Inca term, meaning the place of raining sand because of the heavy winds. And once again, Rimac is named after the once mighty river that was in the area. Now in that last shot, you may have noticed the spacing between the adobe clay bricks. That seems to have had two functions. Number one was to cool the structure down because Lima gets a lot of sun. And also, earthquake proofing. Lima is on a major fault line of the Nazca and Pacific plates. By having that little airspace in between, it means that to some degree the whole structure could move without falling apart which is quite ingenious for 200 to 700 AD. Also, it was built in seven stages. Um, maybe the magic number seven was employed for some reason, but the whole thing is solid. There are no tunnels or channels or shafts in it. 
it's a solid structure. Huaca is an Inca term, which means sacred space. Likely, Hua means place, Ka means sacred. And then Pukiana, they have translated as meaning to play, but it more likely means ceremonial, which is kind of obvious. It's a giant pyramidal structure, and so it's a place, or was a place, of ancient ceremony. If you want to really get down to details, the term pyramid actually only refers to sites located in Egypt. We get the name Pyramid from the Greeks, who arrived somewhere around the 3rd century BC into Egypt. They, of course, wanted to know what the giant structures were called that they were seeing, and they were told those are Pernetters, which means House of Nature. So they, or house of energy, so they translated that into being pyromidos, which means the fire within, or that of the energy within, describing an energetic structure, having shafts, like we know, and chambers, as we know, the king's chamber, for example. But this and the other so-called pyramids around the world are I think should be called pyramidal structures because they're not pyramidos. They don't seem to have any energetic function within, as far as we know. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of an ancient sacred massive complex that most tourists never see and never would have heard of, or in general. But um, Lima does have, I think, five of these left. Uh, that's about it in terms of ancient history here. Of course, the classic place for seeing ancient things in Peru is the city of Cusco, the uh, homeland, capital city of the Incas. Other places to visit, of course, would be Paracas in Peru with the elongated skulls, Nazca with the lines, and in fact, all of Peru is a massive archaeological site. There's so much to see here that it could literally take a lifetime. This is Brian Forster, uh, HiddenIncaTours.com in the modern city of Lima, or Rimac, in Peru.